Welcome back. I'm Pastor Chris Titus, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about the Holy Spirit, but more thinking in terms of how we are focused on our relationship with God and how we make it a priority. Uh, but first, let's begin in prayer. Lord, we acknowledge that sometimes we are easily distracted and that you become less than a top priority in our lives. And so we apologize for that and want to um, learn how to focus on you. And so help us uh, through this message today to understand maybe how to do that. Uh, we ask for your help. Of course, we ask for the stirring of the Holy Spirit as he does his work in each of us. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. Well, we did talk about the Holy Spirit last week, uh, the divine roommate who's living in each believer, encouraging uh, believers, inspiring believers, convicting believers when their behavior does not honor God. And so we talked about that in some detail. And life still can be very challenging. In fact, while we were in Canada, we had an opportunity to go to the... Um, Quebec Falls, and so if you take a look at this video, you'll see that in the middle of the fall is this cliff with a tree growing out of it, and somehow it has not been swept over the rapids, even though it's on the edge of a cliff and there's all this water surrounding it. It's one of those situations where our lives feel that way sometimes, that things are rushing past us so quickly or we're right on the edge of some precipice and we are not able to survive. And so our focus needs to be on God because that's what helps us get through some of these challenging aspects of our lives. And so today I wanna to focus on that. Our key scripture comes from Colossians 3. And this is the Apostle Paul writing the church in Colossae, a group of believers there. Um, and there's some background here. If you want to think of them in terms of a congregation, we, I guess we could do that loosely, but likely these are believers who are meeting in various households, and so his letter is meant to be passed around to them, and he is talking to them about what it means to be a Christian. And so Colossae is this city that's halfway between Eph uh, Ephesus and uh, Antioch, and so Colossae is sort of in the middle of those two things. Now, interestingly enough, what we learn from this letter is it's not only geographically in the middle of those two um, very vibrant Christian uh, populations, but it is theologically as well. And there is a middle-of-the-road Christianity mixing with the culture sort of a vibe going on in Colossae, and Paul is concerned about it. And this is a problem we still struggle with today. Uh, sometimes we refer to this as religious pluralism, meaning that the faith and beliefs that we have are being mixed with cultural ideas, and those two things become plural. They, they move together. And, of course, when that happens because of cultural beliefs or social issues that are hot topics right now or whatever get mixed in with the Christianity, then our faith is weakened. And what we hold true regarding Jesus begins to crumble a bit. And so, uh, as human beings, we are easily distracted. And when we move farther and farther away from biblical principles and more into the world and the beliefs and understanding of humans in their own world, we end up with problems. And this is what Paul was worried about. This was the trend that was happening in the church in Colossae. So Paul is writing them specifically on what scholars refer to as syncretism. And syncretism is the mixing of beliefs and forms and practices of the world with your Christian faith. And it is an amalgamation or a mixing or an assimilation of worldly concepts and ideas into Christian faith. And Paul is saying you, you can't do that. You have to say true to the gospel. You have to say true to biblical uh, teachings. As I said, we sometimes refer to this now as pluralism. Uh, but for Colossae, uh, the folks there, the Colossians, Paul is really trying to communicate some very important things. Don't be mixing human philosophies with Christianity. For example, apparently in Colossae, there was some sort of angel worship going on. 
and this was taken into the Christian church, and so there was a worship of angels. Now, does that mean that particular philosophy was bad? Well, you can certainly be in awe of angels, but to worship angels means you are uh, reducing or taking down the superiority of Jesus Christ. God is to be worshiped, not angels. And so this was something Paul was trying to address, he was concerned about. So let's take a look at, at what he was talking to them about. Uh, look at Colossians 3, beginning in verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Now, I want to look at this passage for a moment, this idea that we are raised with Christ. What, is, what does that mean? Well, that means that we're committed to that relationship. We are saved. And because we are saved, we are to live in a way that God wants us to to seek a relationship with him, to seek things from above. What does God want for my life? How does he want me to act and behave and speak and uh, treat others, right? So our heart is supposed to be set on these things. But as human beings, we have great difficulty focusing on that. We get easily distracted by the newest trend or fad uh, or belief in the world that's happening around us. And I did some research on focusing and I found some interesting things. Uh, my friend who works at a company focuses on the health of three quarters of your body. Yesterday he was promoted to CEO, so now he is head of shoulders, knees, and toes. That's pretty bad. Another man said, I'm having trouble focusing on my work. I'm a Bigfoot photographer. And finally, I saw a new color for a car. It was tangerine. It was on a Ford Focus. And so I told my friend about it, and he responded, Tangerine focus, is that like orange concentrate? Like these jokes, sometimes our focus is bad. Sometimes we struggle to really understand what it is God wants us to see in the world. And it's certainly true with regard to our relationship with Jesus Christ. So Paul writes in Colossians 3 that if you are saved, you set your mind on things above. And so we have to ask ourselves, where is our focus as we listen to this message today? Where is your focus? What are you concentrating on? Is it your job? Is it your habits? Is it your hobbies? Is it your uh, search to find things to make you happy in this very difficult and challenging world? Is that where your focus is? Is it money? Is it the relationships with others? Uh, what is it that you are focusing on? And all these other distractions, we don't focus primarily on our relationship with Christ. And so Paul is saying, wake up. I mean, what's really important for you to do and focus on? And it's Christ. It's Jesus. It's knowing that we have this relationship with God and not to mix it with worldly concepts or new philosophies of what's right and what's wrong, what's offensive and what's not offensive. We need to understand that God tells us what's good, that God wants what's good for us. And there's a lot of people spending time doing all kinds of other things. I know people who focus more on their house than they do with their relationship with God. After all, it needs to be remodeled, repainted, uh, restored in some way, uh, kept up, improved, and their, and their focus is on their house and their yard and their property and not on God. And so I remember seeing a sign once that said, when you focus on other things, you get distracted. And just remember, there's never a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't take any of that stuff with you. When you die, it all stays here. So to put all your focus on worldly things, possessions and money and property and all of that doesn't make any sense because you're not taking it with you. And in the end, nothing in this world matters <clears throat> but our relationship with Christ. That's it. We have to keep our eye on him. 
which means my priority and focus should be, am I in prayer? Am I reading scripture? Am I worshiping with other Christians on Sunday? Those are all things that help me stay connected and looking at my faith as the most important thing in my life. That's our focus. Paul writes in the passage, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So what is he saying? He's saying you died spiritually with Christ on the cross, and when he rose from the grave, it was your resurrection as well into a new life. And so what's the antidote for self-focus and worrying about things in the world and all that stuff that causes us to run around like crazy people? What's the antidote to that? The remedy is to focus on Jesus Christ, to keep our focus on God. So Paul says you are hidden with Christ. What, what does he mean by that? Well, Think of it this way, when God, after you're saved, after you start this relationship with Jesus Christ, when God looks at you, he sees the good. He sees the, the righteousness. He sees the honor. He doesn't see your sins and your flaws and your mistakes. So in a sense, Christ hides those things, covers those things, atones for those things theologically. So what are you living for right now? What is your daily focus? Are you worried about things that you can't control? Remember, on your deathbed, are any of the things that you focus on or worry about going to matter? And the answer 99.9% .9 of the time is no, it's not going to matter. So if it doesn't matter on my deathbed before I take my last breath, then why would I preoccupy what limited time I have in this temporary life focusing on those things? So my focus should be on Christ and my relationship and maturing in it. That's what I need to look at. So, by the way, the old wounds, the scars, the traumas, the dramas of our life, they're not pulled in a U-Haul behind us in the hearse either. So it's not just the good stuff, our possessions. We don't take those with us when we die. All the wounds and scars we don't take with us either. In fact, because of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we have hope in this temporary life, and we have hope of eternal life as well. And so you only take with you when you pass from this world your relationship with Jesus, and that's why it needs to be a priority. And if you didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then that's what you take with you, nothing. And you don't spend eternity with God. That's the definition of our salvation. That is what we believe. And so not only is there heavenly benefits to this focus on Christ, but everyday life can be made easier, a little bit more joyful, a little bit more happy, because we're thinking about our relationship with God before we get involved in all the other drama and worries of this life. So Paul is writing to the church in, Philosophy, uh, in Colossae saying all this false teaching that you're dealing with, you need to stay away from. It's misleading, it's dangerous. It's mixing Christianity with all these other things. And he's saying in this scripture passage that you are now one with Christ, so behave like it. Behave like you know you are saved. Chapter 3 of Colossians describes that becoming a Christian means you break from the old, self-focused, self-interested approach to life. The me, 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 or I'm going to do this because it makes me feel better approach to the world. How we deal with ourselves and others. As Christians, we're moving in a new direction. In the likeness of Christ and not following whatever changes are happening in the culture because the culture has determined that those things are okay. That's not how we are supposed to move forward. We're supposed to focus on Jesus and we're supposed to focus on our relationship with Christ. If you think about it, all of social media is really based on this idea of I want to be liked. So if you think about it, you like things, or if it's really good, you love things that you see posted on social media. The church can't fall into this category of wanting to be liked. 
our role is to stay in relationship with other believers and each other, right? And to teach and disciple and to care for one another, love one another, and then take the gospel out into the world and do the same thing, to share God's love with other people. The goal is not to be liked. We're not watering down our theology so that more people will like us. We're sharing the word of God, the love of God, in how we behave in the world. Now, this is a challenge. It was a challenge in Paul's day, which is why he's writing this letter, and it's a challenge in our life today as well. The Bible is supposed to shape our thinking, not a survey on what most Americans believe now. The secret to a happy, happy life, a more joyful life, is a focus on Jesus Christ. It's just that basic. And with all the drama in the world, Paul is saying, hold on to, let your affections be towards maturing in that relationship. Whatever stresses you are under, give it to God in prayer, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, whatever. Give it to God. Eugene Peterson is, uh, was a New Testament scholar who wrote the message translation of the Bible. And the message is not so much a translation as it is a poetic commentary in modern terms, kind of rephrasing scripture uh, to help with understanding. It's not a word-for-word -word translation of Greek or Hebrew. But I often glance at the message and its rephrasing because it helps me with my own understanding. It's just another commentary opinion on it. So take a listen how Eugene Peterson rephrases Colossians 3, 1 through 4 that we read earlier. He writes, so if you're serious about living this new resurrected life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb with things right in front of you. Look up, be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. And when I read this rephrasing of Colossians 3 by Eugene Peterson in the message, I can't think of help, help but think of my own behavior. There are times that I am shuffling along, looking at the ground, focused on my problems, focused on my worries or difficulties, and not focused on Jesus. I need to look up because in Christ is where the action is. That's where my hope is. That's where the change is going to come in my life. So what about you? Is this something that you should be doing as well? Because I'm trying to do it, and so I would encourage you to do the same. I was listening to a good preacher named Dwayne Dunaway, and he was talking about this Colossians passage, and he said, the bottom line is, are you preoccupied with your faith? It made me think, am I OCD for Jesus? Or am I just trying to order all the little ducks in a row in my life? Am I preoccupied with my problems, struggles, or worries? Or is my focus on prayer and reading scripture and worshiping with other Christians, worshiping God? And how we answer this question of focus will probably reveal how much peace we really do have in our life right now, how much joy we're experiencing. Now, if you need help with this, reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. We'll have a cup of coffee. Think about some ways that you might be able to improve your focus. The other possibility is you can join small groups in the church, which is why I encourage you to stay connected to a church so that you can experience the discussion of faith and the focus on faith with other believers. And that happens uh, with uh, small groups for sure. Improve your faith focus. Maybe you get involved. Maybe you become a member of your church. Um, and it helps you stay connected to Christ and looking at what's really important. Finally, what is God really calling you to do? Really. And Pastor Dunaway summarizes it wonderfully. He says, simply love him, follow him, and share God's love with others. It's that basic. We don't need worldly trends or fads or new ways of looking at things to make ourselves feel better or be liked. Stay away from that stuff. Instead, 
We need to not make a colossal misfocus of our life by concentrating on what's happening in the culture, which by the way shifts and changes depending on the wind, but instead we need to follow Paul's suggestion in Colossians and stay focused on the things above. Stay focused on Jesus. Amen? I want to again thank you for the gifts and donations that help keep this ministry online. Uh, certainly the church appreciates that. I want to invite you to come to a worship service with us. The Armada worship service starts at 9.30 on Sundays. And the uh, West Berlin service, which is in Allenton, uh, starts at 11 o'clock. So please join us. There'll be a video attached to this sermon. I hope you enjoy it. Until the next time we gather, be blessed.